In the last video, we went over linear approximation as a concept. We're going to use that to look at a linear approximation. We're going to graph the function along with the approximation that we find and use it to approximate a value we wouldn't be able to do without a calculator normally and figure out how far off our approximation is by calculating that percent error. So looking at the function 12 minus x squared, a value I can easily plug in without a calculator is 2. One that I might not be able to plug in without a calculator is 2.1. So we're going to plug in 2, make it a linear approximation for it, and use it to evaluate 2.1. So starting with our linear approximation, we have our equation from the previous video. L of x is f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. And we're going to do that in three steps each time. So first step is to figure out the first piece here, this f of a. So I'm going to plug in f of 2 into the original function. So 12 minus 2 squared. 12 minus 4 is going to be 8. So I have that first part figured out, f of 2 is 8. Now I'm going to take 2 and plug it into the derivative. So my second step is to take the derivative. The derivative of 12 is 0, derivative of minus x squared is going to be a minus 2x. We're going to do f prime of 2, which is going to be negative 2 times 2. So our f prime of 2 is negative 4. My third and final step, now that I did f of a and f prime of a, is to write it into this equation. So my L of x is going to be f of a from the first step, which is 8, plus f prime of 8, or f prime of 2, rather. So f prime of 2 is a negative, so I'm not going to write plus a minus 4. I think that looks a little silly. And then we have x minus a, our a value here was 2. And I'm going to normally leave mine like this. I think it's a useful way to plug in. I love um, slope-intercept form normally. Uh, but I don't know that it's as useful for slope-intercept form for a lot of these. Um, but just to show you what slope-intercept form would be, make it into an mx plus b, you would distribute. So we'll typically leave it in the form of the equation. But just to show you, if you prefer slope-intercept form, you just subtract or distribute that negative 4 to the x, get negative 4x, and negative 4 times negative 2 is a positive 8. So our slope-intercept form would be negative 4x plus 16. And we're going to see why maybe that first form, the not slope intercept form, is a little bit easier to, to calculate the L for 2.1 down below there. So let's graph what this looks like. So starting with some values near 2, since that's what our A was. So I might just plug in like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and figure out what the value of f of x is. So going into this function up here, our original function, I'm going to plug in 12 minus 0 squared is 12. So we start out at 0, 12. And then if we plug in 1, you get 11. Plugging in 2, 12 minus 4 is going to be 8. Plugging in 3, 12 minus 9 is 3. And then 12 minus 4 squared is going to be negative 4. So I want to make my y values so that I have up to 12. So I might just label by 2s. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So looking at this, we can also go down to negative 4, negative 2, negative 4. All right, so plotting our parabola, 12 minus x squared starts at 0, 12, 1, 11, 2, 8, 3, 3, and 4, negative 4. Here's our upside down parabola. Since it is a parabola, we could reflect it across the axis of symmetry there. But 
we're just approximating near a equals two, so we don't have to draw the other half necessarily. And then I'm gonna put in here my linear approximation in a different color. So plugging in to my linear approximation, if we plug in at two, we would get eight, and we could plot other points. You can either plug into this version of the line or this version here. If you plug in zero to that version, we're up at 16, just plotting some of them. You can make an X, Y chart if you prefer that. So we plugged in zero, we got 16. Plugging in two, you get eight. And then maybe I'll just plot at three or four. If I plug in four, I'm at zero. Or in other words, you can start at your y-intercept 16, and then your slope is 4 down and 1 to the right. So 4 down and 1 to the right would bring us to 12 because they're by 2s. So 2, 4 down brought us to 8. Going down 4 over 1, which is really going down 2 because of our scale on that y-axis. But either way, we're going to get the equation of a line whether you like plotting with the y-intercept first and then moving over by your slope or just plugging in specific values and trying to connect a line from there. So what we can see visually from this is that our line is pretty good right around two. It very closely estimates that curve, but as we get further away, like as we get over to four, we're pretty far off from estimating the value of the function. Let's figure out the value for 2.1. We might be able to do this one in our head 12 minus 2.1 squared, but it would be much harder than just plugging into our linear approximation. So f of 2.1 is gonna be approximately the same thing as l of 2.1. Their graphs are very close around two. So I'm gonna plug into eight minus four times 2.1 minus two, replacing that x in the linear approximation with a 2.1. So we have eight minus four times 0.1, so 8 minus 0.4 gives us our linear approximation of 7.6. So something that we might not be able to calculate in our head, we should be able to do now that we made it a linear function. And now we'll see how far off we are by computing our percent error. The formula from the last video is 100. You do the exact minus, or rather the approximate minus the exact. So what we just got for L of X minus the exact F of X over the exact. So doing that here, I'd have to grab my calculator and figure out what is F of 2.1. We know L of 2.1 was 7.6. The exact value should have actually been 7.59 by plugging into the original function using a calculator, f of 2.1 is actually 12 minus 2.1 squared is 7.59. So we did a very good job. We're very close. And when we calculate that percent error, we are only 0.13% off. So not too bad, and a shortcut way to figure out values without a calculator. Obviously, this was a long exploration, but typically it'll help us um, when we don't do all of the graphing and that sort to quickly figure out a value without a calculator.